Welcome back to the Dividend Diplomats YouTube channel, guys. You've got Bert, the Hurt Locker, and Lanny, too many, the Dividend Champions of the World. And we're back on this channel, guys. We're back in the banking sector. Yes, the banking crisis is still hovering over us. Interest rates are rising. Banks are still failing. But guys, we're here to talk about some smaller community banks. Before we do, smash that subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up as we pursue our journey to financial freedom, everybody. Pumped up. You know I like banks. Clearly, when we did our last purchase video, I had that week where I just threw money in the banks. But guess what? There are still plenty of great values out there. And that's what we're hoping to show you here, that even though the banking crisis has kind of settled down, um, it's been a calmer week or so here with the banks, there's still plenty of great opportunities to buy undervalued bank stocks with high dividend yields. Yeah, things have calmed down. You're right. And, you know, we're filming this video here on March 30th, just before the quarter here is over. So we'll see what Friday, March 31st brings. Obviously, we've had the three bank failures with Silvergate, um, Signature, and Silicon Valley. Obviously, all finding suitors. We had the Credit Suisse acquisition with UBS. We had the Deutsche Bank. Um, Maybe also it's some... calmed. Maybe it hasn't calmed. We'll see. It could just happen overnight. You're right. Uh, Speaking of that, First Republic still is a little bit of iffy, shaky, yeah. um, pack yes. west even. Yeah, and that's what we mean. Like it's calmed down now, but it can change like that. You can wake up. I think the Silicon Valley thing started happening on a Wednesday night and the bank had failed by Friday. That said, um, banks have obviously this has given banks time to plan too. Let's not act like things have been stagnant either. Um, with some of the failures, with some of the stuff that's going on, you would hope that the strong banks have taken a look at their balance sheets, taken a look at their interest rate risk, a lot of things that caused these and made the necessary adjustments where they needed to. Yeah. And the Fed, you know, put another backstop with the BTLF or the bank term loan facility, um, mm -hmm. you know, which is essentially a similar facility that they've always offered. But this time the Fed's offering it at par value instead of the lower market value, um, which will then you know, help institutions not have to sell their investment portfolio at deep mm -hmm. losses. Instead, they can borrow at higher amounts or mm -hmm. larger amounts. Um, and I know there's been hundreds of billions of dollars already taken from this facility from the Fed, um, which kind of speaks to, okay, and I think they had to show reason for cause to use it. Yeah. Um, so it's it, kind of interesting. Yeah, and there are a lot of strengths, and that's really what ultimately hurt Silicon Valley when and they needed to. They, they needed cash. People were pulling their deposits out, and they had to sell these securities at massive losses and take those losses. So if the Fed provides an option for a bank to get the liquidity without having to incur those losses and hold off a bank run from happening, that's obviously a good thing for the system. It's a good thing from the system, but it makes you think about what could be some great banks to buy. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to dive into the smaller community banks um, here that are in between $2 billion and the biggest here on the list. We're talking about three of them are $14 billion all within our local Midwestern area here. We're talking Ohio and Pennsylvania, right, Bert? That's right. So what are we going to do here? We are going to run them through our stock screener. That's also slightly modified for banks. Our three metrics, PE ratio less than the S&P 500, payout ratio less than 60%, history of increasing dividends, and that bonus metric, the dividend yield. And then for banks too, as a second valuation metric, we're going to look at the price to book ratio, because that's really the industry standard when you're evaluating is a bank undervalued or not. And typically we look for an undervalued bank to have a price to book of one, 1 1.1 or less, like the one to 1.1 range or less, I should say. I, I misspoke. Yeah. That. No, you're, you're spot on. And, um, you know, we'll even flash up some total asset measures just so you can get a flavor of what these community banks bring. They're not three trillion. Again, we're talking somewhere just in the small three billion range here. So they're not JP Morgan at, um, and these usually carry lower risk because they don't deal with some complex instruments. Their balance sheets are fairly vanilla, for lack of a better way. To Commercial it. real estate, mortgages, um, home equity auto, loans, auto loans, yeah, deposits, yeah, nothing crazy. 
maybe a couple interest rate swaps, no fancy derivatives or anything along those lines. Wealth management. Some of these have strong wealth management teams that help get the income. So let's talk, Lanny. Where is this first bank headquartered? So we're going down to Lancaster, Ohio, LCNB, ticker symbol LCNB. God, for, I, I swear it. every video they want is the one. <laughs> um, but I love really, it. Yeah, they're recently trading at $16.18. There are $2 billion total assets. Um, it's a community bank. And again, to give it relatively speaking, JP Morgan's trillions in total assets. I so, bet JP Morgan has loans bigger than this bank. Probably, 100%. probably, probably, probably yeah. depositors as well. Is That's that true. only the uninsured limit? Now, <laughs> now, for what if, if LCMB puts all their deposits in JP Morgan, would it be insured? I'm kidding. Um, kidding, kidding. All right, that was a bad joke. All right, let's keep going, man. You start running them through this. I'll, I'll rifle through it here, guys. Earnings per share is two dollars, so the price to earnings is eight point zero nine. So fairly low for a community bank. Dividend is right now 21 cents per share per quarter, 84 cents per year. That payout ratio is also low at 42% right in Bird's sweet spot, the meat of the bat. Five years of growing dividends at an average rate of 5.09%. And that dividend yield has also swelled. Now they're down 11% this year to over 5% at 5.19%. And Bert gave indication earlier the book value, which is really just the shareholders' equity over common shares outstanding, and that pro- that book value was seventeen dollars and eighty two cents. So again, they were tr- their market value is sixteen, and the book value is almost eighteen. So your actual price to book ratio is less than one, where we both want to see it. Perfect. I mean, the metrics speak for themselves with LCMB. Um, the yield over five percent is great, and that's what happens when the stock's down eleven percent year to date. Should we talk about number two here, Lanny? Good old. You get, in, uh, you get into it, rip it. It's Provident Financial, ticker symbol PFS. And we've talked about this bank stock for well over last year. We've slowly been nibbling to our position, adding every once in a while. They're down 11% year to date, 18% over the last 52 weeks. Comparatively, they are the largest one on our list. LCMB was a $1.9 billion bank. Provident is $13.9 billion. So this one's a little bit bigger, but we still like them because they maintain that large community bank feel without getting into the complex operations still that some of the larger institutions have. Yeah. And I mean, as Bert said, small but large, large but small. And they're trading at $19.08. And yeah, Bert, actually, I think you should take the third stock for sure. I'll, I'll cut it off here at payout ratio. You can finish it and probably dive into Orstown. Yep. But their earnings per share expectations are $2.47. So that price to earnings ratio, again, not price to book yet, is at 7.72, which is actually lower than LC and B's. Mm-hmm. But Bert, yeah. this is where you got to come in, man. We got 24 cents per share per quarter. So what's mm-hmm. the payout ratio look like as you segue into the growth rate? As the great Stone Cold Steve Austin said, I'll take it from here, nurse. All right, the payout ratio is 38.87%. Again, slightly lower than LCMB. They've only increased that dividend for two years, so they don't have a five-year average dividend growth rate because they're only two years of growth. Can't do anything about that. With that, though, their yield is now above 5% too, so they're down 11%. Yield is jumping up another 5% banger of the yield. Book value as a 12.31 was 21.25. That gives you a price to book of 0.9. So, Again, similar to LCMB, little different, larger bank. The metrics are actually showing slightly, slightly cheaper. Um, interesting stuff here for a provident. Yeah. Now, Bert, <laughs> you know why you're taking the third one. Here. I, I need you to I talk to. about the third community bank again. We're in this upper Midwest area. We're not heading over into Pennsylvania. We're crossing. We're on. I don't even I-76. know what about you used to take. It's I-76 for this one. We're heading to Harrisburg, uh, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, the banking sector of the world. And um, there's actually a few banks headquartered in Harrisburg, but um, Orstown, ticker symbol ORF, O-R-R-F. Not quite, but it's a pretty funny ticker symbol if you ask me. Uh, they are... 2.9 billion. They've grown substantially over the last few years. $2.9 billion asset to large in LCMB, but still much smaller than PFS. Their price come down 14% year to date, 52 weeks down 13%. And with that, their price is below $20 per share. At the time of this video, they closed at 1995. 
So sliding into that first metric, the EPS is 333. It's a P ratio of six, 5.99 rounded up to six. Um, payout ratio, dividend, annual dividends, 80 cents. That gives you a payout ratio of 24%. The lowest by far of this list. Wow. There's, yeah, their five-year dividend growth rate is 12.04%. And they've increased that dividend for six years here. And with that, their yield is now over 4%. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I mean, in price to book, just going through that, their book value is 21.45 per share. That gives you a price to book of 0.932. So the third bank on this list with price to book ratios below the 1x mark that we look for. It's third one on the list. Um, they're down 14% this year. So they're down the most out of the three community banks. And again, the reason why community banks are a lot of fun to look at is because they ride down with the rest of the banking market without the risk. Yeah. So, or not to say they're riskless, but they have lower risk than a lot of the large banks. Yes. Yeah. I think that's the, that's the right way to say it. So in summary, we covered LCMB, PFS, or it's time. All are showing strong signs of undervaluation. They all have payout ratios that are 42% or less. Um, PE ratios, less, eight's the highest and everything's less. All price to book ratios less than one. And yields, two of them are above 5% and Orstown's at 4%. So some strong, strong dividend yield opportunities are available here in the community banking sector. As a quick hot take, I've been scooping up a couple shares here and there of Provident Financial PFS, as I discussed on the previous video yesterday um, or earlier this weekend and Orstown, I've actually started to pick up a couple shares here and there and you may not see it just because the yield's the lowest out of the three but the growth rate has been pretty solid the last five years it's varied between five six percent to upwards well over ten percent obviously the five-year average at twelve percent but Bert, I mean I know you like community banks we actually yeah. own LCMB in our joint diplomats investment account yeah, and I own it in my personal one too, and it's one that I've targeted um, uh, that I would definitely be interested in there. I have some other portfolio cleanup. I have a bunch of banks too. I have some smaller banks, lower yields. It would also make sense to possibly just sell those, move them all into a higher yielding LCMB, consolidate positions, but also pick up some strong community banks too. We'll see if I do that. That's actually not a terrible idea. So are you guys buying in the banking industry right now during the banking crisis? Do you have faith in the banking system here? Has Jerome Powell, Janet Yellen, and the Federal Reserve and the U.S. Treasury provided that confidence back to you. Let us know in the comments what bank stocks you've been buying. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Give this video a big old-fashioned thumbs up. And Lanny, I think there's something you got to tell everyone here before we send them off. You're either with us or you're against us. That was Bert the Herd and Lanny from the Dividend Diplomats. Over and out. Mm -hmm.